But first, we've seen the Prime Minister attacked viciously in recent days. Today, it was Jenny Morrison's turn. She was trending on Twitter for most of the day purely due to the unhinged, demented hatred from the very same folk who call themselves feminists and say they're tolerant, kind and pro-women. This is what set off the trolls. Behind the scenes in the kitchen cabinet. Watch out for the knives. Only from behind. The Prime Minister launches his secret weapon. I'm in. What would you say to your 16-year-old self? <laughs> Run! But can Jenny Morrison swing the election? I actually felt sick to my stomach. And save her husband. Now, this isn't the first time Australia's First Lady has been subjected to vile online abuse. Jenny has previously copped creepy, sexist and hateful commentary for the crime of being married to the Prime Minister. We saw the pile on when TV star Magda Zhubansky sent a number of bizarre tweets critical of Jenny Morrison and even suggesting she may be making a white supremacist sunk signal with her hands. Today, Jenny Morrison copped it for daring to speak. Again, the very same folk who were cheering on every word Grace Tame and Brittany Higgins uttered at the press club were suddenly aghast that a woman was speaking. I guess when they say, let her speak, they're only talking about women who share their worldview. Much of the abuse targeted at the First Lady is just too obscene to share on this program, but here is a sample of some of the milder comments of criticism, which we can show you. Deborah Allen, who calls herself a feminist in her Twitter bio, wrote, Jenny Morrison is the biggest bludger in Australia right now. Vicky Richardson said, Jenny Morrison, what on earth has that woman done that warrants her as an asset to Australia? And of course, there were plenty of crazy conspiracy theorists who posted this picture of Jenny Morrison accusing her of making a white supremacist symbol with her hands. I mean, just utterly unhinged. Jenny Morrison appearing with Scott in a desperate 60 Minutes interview. Many remember her as the woman flashing a white power hand gesture in a photo with Meghan Markle. That is not a white power hand gesture, by the way. I mean, only crazy people believe that. The Guardian's political editor, Catherine Murphy, shared this. Why does Jenny Morrison have to save anything? Dear God, in brackets on all fronts. And Belinda Jones posted this. Jenny doesn't work, doesn't do charity, lives a life of privilege between taxpayer-funded staff mansions, she espouses a creed that only 1% to 2% of Australians can relate to, acts as a human shield, life of privilege, enabler. Of course she wants this gig to continue. What utter nonsense. I mean, don't you just love the sisterhood? Now, if the wife of a Labor or Greens politician cops some of that invective, there'd be saturation media coverage, dozens of columns and a deep examination of the hatred behind the abuse. The media would rally around the victim, but conservative women rarely receive that sort of support and protection, even when they're victims of clearly misogynistic abuse. And today we saw another example of a glaring double standard. Look at how Premier Dan Andrews refers to the Labor MP who crossed the floor to vote for a motion to properly investigate his government's red shirts rorting saga. The rules of the party are very, very clear. What was your reaction when you were told about this? I wasn't entirely surprised, but to be honest, I'm not here to talk about that person. That person? Really, Premier? Could you be more dismissive and disrespectful? You can just imagine the howls of outrage and wall-to-wall -wall condemnation that would come if Scott Morrison or any conservative male referred to a female MP as that person. 